Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'll begin this afternoon's uh, Stratford City Council meeting. And we'll begin this afternoon's meeting with our moment of silent reflection. I'd ask all of us to think about this Wednesday at 1030 when we normally celebrate the day of mourning, honoring all the men and women who have gone to workplaces across not only our province, this country and the world, but who have not come home. And it's our uh, obligation as elected officials, along with their coworkers and their employers and all residents and citizens to ensure safe workplaces for us now and in the future. So if we could please take a moment of silent reflection. Thank you. And I want to thank Councillor Henderson uh, for her continued commitment to the Stratford District Labour Council, who are one of our partners in honoring those that have lost their lives. And again, this year we can't have a service, but thank you to the members of the Labour Council for their continued advocacy. I'll turn the meeting over to the clerk. Through your worship, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? And if so, please state the general nature thereof. Seeing none. Item three is adoption of the minutes, and there is a motion that the minutes of the regular meeting dated April 12th of Council of the Corporation of the City of Stratford be adopted as printed. Moved by Councillor Bunting, second by Councillor Vasilakos. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, Fenny? That's carried. Item four is adoption of the addendum, and there is no addendum to be adopted. Moving on to item five. Report of the Committee of the Whole in Camera Session, Item 5.1, from the April 12th session under the Municipal Act, as amended, a matter concerning the following item was considered, an appointment of an Energy and Environment Advisory Committee representative to the Active Transportation Advisory Committee, and there is a motion that Anna Stratton be appointed as an Energy and Environment Committee representative to the Active Transportation Advisory Committee for a one-year term to November 30th, 2021, or until a successor is appointed. Moved by Councillor Burback, seconded by Councillor Henderson. Discussion? Not all in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Item 5.2, the April 26th Committee of the Whole and Camera Session was canceled. So we'll move on to item six, hearings of deputations and presentations, and there was none scheduled. Item seven is orders of the day. Item 7.1 is a resolution regarding the local planning appeal tribunal appeals. And there is a staff recommendation that council direct, that council direct city staff to engage the city solicitor to represent the city at the local planning appeal tribunal on draft plan of subdivision 31219-001 and zone change application Z9-19 for Stratford with the municipal address of 236 Britannia Street. Moved by Councillor Beatty, second by Councillor Vazalakos. Discussion? Councillor Seben. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify, it just says in the report that um, there's no hearing scheduled. Is that, I assume that um, hearings are, once they're scheduled, then we would pay for them for the solicitor's care. We wouldn't be in a scenario where the solicitor would prepare and then there would be no hearing. Is that correct? Through your worship. So typically how an LPAT hearing proceeds is there's usually a case management conference scheduled first and the city solicitor would represent the city at that case management conference. And from there, um, any mediation or hearing would be scheduled. So the heavy work in terms of preparation happens once that hearing's been scheduled, not ahead of time. Thank you. Councillor Henderson. I, I just have a quick question. Um, So there was three different options presented. Are all three looked at when um, it goes to the hearing? And can it end up being any one of the three if, if they win? Uh, through your worship, so all local planning appeal tribunal hearings are described as de novo hearings, which means 
any new evidence or information can be given to the local planning appeal tribunal. So while council's um, decision on the application is certainly uh, what the city will be putting forward in our case, um, the applicant and the property owners do have the option to put forward alternative um, scenarios as well. Thank you, anything further? If not, all in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried, thank you. Item 7.2 is a resolution regarding various easements for countryside estates phase three. And there's a staff recommendation that the city of Stratford accept an easement over part one plan 44R-5862 from Countryside Developments Inc for sewer and water main extensions. That the city of Stratford accept an easement over parts two and plan three uh, for overland drainage and a rear yard catch basin and lead. That the city of Stratford accept an easement over block 59 from Countryside Development for public access to the land. That the City of Stratford accepts an easement over Lot 31 from Countryside Development for a temporary road and water main. That the City of Stratford accepts a transfer of Block 1561. And that the City of Stratford declare Part 2, Plan 44R-5843 as public highway and declare as forming part of McCarthy Road West. Moved by Councillor Clifford, seconded by Councillor Henderson. Discussion. Councillor Burback. Thank you. Yeah, I just had a question about uh, Block 60 and 61 becoming natural areas. I'm just curious as to uh, once they become city property, would parks and management, who would be managing those? And I'm wondering if there's a plan for um, like a wetland landscaping or some other LID type of gardening that, that happens there? Uh, that question would best be answered by probably Mr. St. Louis or Ms. Bridge. Uh, through your worship, I'm going to assume that when the lands are turned over to the city and are designated to be in uh, park development, that they would be managed under our park department. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, all those in favor? Opposed, Fenny? That's carried. Item 7.3 is a resolution for a contract for 47 Downey Mason Street restoration. And there is a staff recommendation that council approve an additional budget of 85000 from the capital facilities reserve that the Masons, masonry restoration of 47 Downey Street be awarded to 818185 Ontario Inc. at a total tender price of $159,330, including HST, that the mayor and clerk of the respective delegates be authorized to sign the necessary contract agreement. Mover for such. Councilor Vazalako, second to Council Burback. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Item 7.4 is a proclamation from the Communities in Bloom. And there is a motion that City Council hereby proclaims the week of May 2nd as Communities in Bloom Week in the City of Stratford in recognition of the benefits and value that Communities in Bloom provide. Councillor Beatty moving, seconded by Councillor Burback. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, any? Let's carry. Item eight, business for previous notice has been given and there's none scheduled. So moving on to item nine, reports of the standing city. Item 9.1 is the report of the infrastructure, transportation and safety committee. And there are five items listed for consideration as follows. Item 9.1.1, presentation by Cycle Stratford. Item 9.1.2, the AMO LAS water and sewer warranty program. Item 9.1.3, 2020 water summary report. Item 9.1.4, City of Stratford Winter Operations Plan. And item 9.1.5, request for exemption from the noise control bylaw for the 2021 Stratford Festival outdoor season at the Festival Theater in Tom Patterson Theater. Councillor Vazalakos will move, seconded by Councillor Bunting. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. Item 9.2 is report of the Planning and Heritage Committee, and there are two items listed for consideration. Item 9.2.1 and 9.2.2 both relate to an unsolicited proposal for the development of the Erie Street parking lot. Moved by Councillor 
Ritzma, second by Councillor Ingram. The report be presented. Andy, all those in favor? Opposed, Fenny? Sorry, sorry Councillor Ingram, did you have, sorry, I apologize. So I will uh, postpone that vote. I saw Councillor Ingram's hand, I apologize. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that the unsolicited proposal for the development of the Erie Street parking lot related to the Grand Trunk Community Hub also included mixed use housing. The um, brief description only includes public, private, and social housing. Uh, I'd like to make sure that it includes mixed use housing as well. Councillor Ritzman, you'll agree to include the wording. Councillor Ingram seconded that. Councillor Clifford, you had a question on that? Yeah, I had a question on the RFP on the hub is there a timeline on that like are we is it in in progress or it, is it going to be in progress in the next short while uh miss thompson i'll leave it to her to give you a timeline um through you um your worship um with respect to a timeline for issuing the request for proposal staff are working on a report that will be coming back with some additional items for your consideration and we will uh, endeavor to get that report to you as quickly as, as we are able. Anything further? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed, Benny? Ms. Carey, thank you. Item 9.3 is the report of the Finance and Labor Relations Committee, and there are three items listed for consideration. Item 9.3.1 is purchasing policy exemption for Viking Sides Roller Pro Truck. Item 9.3.2 is retaining a consultant for the 2022 development charges bylaw. And item 9.3.3 is the 2020 lottery license activity update. Councillor Gaffney is chair of financial moves, seconder. Councillor Seven, discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed to Benny, that's carried. Item 10 is notice of intent and there is none scheduled. Item 11 is reading of the bylaws. And there are seven bylaws listed for consideration as follows. Item 11.1 .1 is acceptance of easements and countryside developments. Item 11.2 is dedication of public highway forming part of McCarthy Road West. Item 11.3 is transfer of block 60 and 61 from plan 44M-77 to the city of Stratford. Item 11.4 is acceptance of tender for masonry restoration of 47 Down Street. Item 11.5 is amend appointments bylaw 178-2018. Item 11.6 is the 2021 tax ratios, rates, and tax reduction bylaw. And item 11.7 is a transfer payment agreement for court security and prisoner transportation program. And these bylaws can be taken collectively upon unanimous vote of council present. Councillor Henderson and Councillor Burback will move and second they be taken collectively upon unanimous consent. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That's carried. I'll declare it to, to move unanimously. So we'll take first and second reading. Councillor Bunting and Councillor Beatty for bylaws 11, 1 through 7. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? That carries. Third and final reading is Councillor Gaffney, seconded by. Councillor Burback, thank you. Bylaws 11, one through seven, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, Fanny, and that's carried, thank you. Item 12 is consent agenda. Are there any items on the consent agenda that members of council would like to deal with at this time? Okay, seeing none, we'll go to new business. And uh, I have a couple things. First, I'd like to Welcome Ann Sirkos to the uh, council meeting. Ann is our acting director of human resources and has joined the city. And uh, this is Ann's first council meeting. So Ann, welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, the second person I'd like to welcome is our new director of infrastructure, uh, Taylor Crinklaw, who has come back to the city. And uh, Taylor has started with the city uh, today. And uh, Taylor, we welcome you back to the corporate leadership team at the city of Stratford. So, to Ann and Taylor, welcome, and to Ed Delovic, who's still here with us. Ed, thanks for uh, for hanging on and finishing up some projects. Councillor Henderson. Could they show themselves for a few minutes so we can see what they look like? They're both Thank in their you. office, it's perfect. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. 
Anybody else have anything else under new business? Well, I'd just like to take this opportunity uh, to thank uh, our city staff yesterday and public works, and of course, the, the members of the Stratford Police Service. Um, on behalf of council, they put in a great effort yesterday in an effort for public safety and to ensure that uh, a rally or protest, whatever you choose to call it, uh, had minimal impact uh, on the rest of the residents. And I know that for some of them, they took um, quite a bit of abuse, both verbally and, uh, and, uh, and threats. Uh, I do say this, that uh, the Stratford Police uh, did issue a statement earlier this afternoon that they are looking at charges with regards to this, to the organizers and people that were in attendance. There were 13 bylaw enforcement infractions uh, handed out yesterday. There were two arrests, one for uttering a threat and one for mischief. Uh, and there were uh, no injuries uh, with anyone taken to hospital. So uh, I know that for our staff, it was a tough situation to be in, but I want to thank them, Adam Ryan and uh, Jeremy Witzel and the, the workers of Public Works, along with Inspector Taylor and the uh, deployed staff from the Stratford Police Service. So thank you to them on behalf of Council. Is there anything further? If not, a motion to adjourn to, to standing committees and reconvene in open Council after. Councillor Vazalakos and Councillor Burbeck. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. I'd like to call the Social Services um, Committee to order. Um, any declarations of pecuniary interest and the general nature, therefore? Seeing none. Um, the subcommittee meetings are attached for everybody to read from April 13th. Delegations, there's none scheduled. And I see Kim has popped up online here, report of the director of social services, that the report titled social services really fund phase three allocation be received for information. And Kim, would you like to um, say anything about that? Uh, thank you to the chair. This is just to advise council of the funding allocation that the city of uh, Stratford Consolidated Municipal Service Manager received the third part of the uh, Social Service Relief Funding. Uh, this is uh, tagged for operational cost, and we received approximately 1.1 million in provincial funding uh, for those homeless and precariously housed. Any questions, Councillor Gaffney? I'll move the recommendation, Madam Chair. Thank you. And Councillor Bunting is seconded. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Carry. So the next one is alternate housing pilot. This is sad news. Uh, the federal and provincial funding update. The council repealed the bylaw authorizing the signing of the contribution agreement for the social services relief fund phase two hold back with the Ontario Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing for the construction of eight modular supportive housing units at 398 Erie Street, um, Stratford, in light of the city's application be denied. Um, did you wanna say anything about that, Kim at all? Uh, thank you, through the Chair. Uh, this report is uh, just uh, giving you the update of the status of the provincial federal funding for RHI. The first round uh, was highly competitive. Uh, as you can see through the management report, that the CMHE has confirmed 179 projects with priorities given to Indigenous governing bodies and organizations. And although we were not successful in the first round of applications for this. Looking for a mover, seconder, Councillor Burback and Councillor Ingram. Any questions or comments other than that? All in favor? And the next one is a report of the manager of Ontario Works, update on social services relief funding. That re the report entitled Update on Social Services Relief Funding be received for information. And did anybody from the department want to talk on that one at all? Uh, Councillor Gaffney? Madam Chair, we uh, missed an item. Uh, subcommittee recommendation that a letter be sent on behalf of the city, Stratford City Council, to 
the province requesting that funding programs provided to municipalities be predictable, stable, and flexible, both in scope and timelines. Thank you very much, Councillor Gaffney. Are you moving that? I will make that motion, Madam Chair. And Kathy Vakalosis, will you uh, second that? Yeah, and I. Yeah. And you have a comment? I just thought, in, in addition, if we could add that it be copied to AMO for um, support. Okay. I will, I will support that change. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Carried. Thank you for catching that, Dave. And then we'll move on to the report of the manager of Ontario Works. Kim, did you have anything you want to say on that? Uh, thank you through the chair. Uh, this report just gives uh, council an update of the services and supports that uh, in the community that were enhanced to create or, and, uh, and help address the homelessness and housing stability um, through that, that we are seeing through the COVID pandemic. And so it outlines the different um, supports that we've been working with our partner agencies um, to, to help those people that are under-resourced at this time. Yes, and for anybody reading it, it's, you know, the community has seen 73 households experiencing homelessness move into permanent housing across the city of Stratford, town of St. Mary's and Perth County. 59 of these movements occurred during the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, it's great to see the partners working together um, in our community, especially the local community food center, United Way Perth Huron, Family Services Perth Huron, um, the local uh, started providing meals in 2020. I mean, the report is there for anybody to read. I'm just sort of highlighting a few things that how our community works together. So we have a mover. No, we don't. Um, Councillor Burback and Councillor Bacalopoulos. Any questions or comments on this report? All in favor? And the rest is for the information of council. So we're looking for adjournment. Councillor Ingram and Councillor Clifford. All in favor? Carry. Thank you. Good afternoon. I will call the Community Services Committee to order. First item is, uh, second item is disclosure of pecuniary interests in the general nature or thereof. And seeing none. Item three is uh, subcommittee minutes that you have before you. Item four is our delegations for which we have none scheduled. Item five is report of the Director of Community Services with item 5.1 being our OR Insurance Almond Score Clock Advertisement Agreement Renewal. And we had a discussion at the subcommittee and there is a motion before you uh, that the agreement between the City of Stratford and Orange Insurance Brokers Inc. for advertising on the Almond Arena score clock be renewed for a further five-year term into June 30th of 2026. Motion by Councillor Bunting, second by Councillor Henderson. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? And that is carried. Item six is report of the manager of transit with item 6.1 being free transit during the pandemic. Again, this came up as discussion in our subcommittee. Uh, we had uh, a good conversation about this and it was sent back to the manager for recommendations um, with additional information provided. There is a staff recommendation, but I'll open it up for conversation at this time. Seeing none, is there someone that would like to make a motion at this time? Councillor Seven. Oh, I was just moving the recommendation. 
that the management report titled free transit during pandemic be received for information and that the and that direction be provided to council with respect to providing free transit during the various stages of pandemic yes, second by Councillor Henderson, all in favor? I, I've got a question, Mr. Chair. Yes, Councillor Gaffney. Uh, so what, what uh, direction are we providing? Councillor Seven, I'll turn it back to you in terms of the direction. Uh, Sorry, I misunderstood. I thought this was a, a report. Uh, we were going to receive a report about this, but uh, I don't have any direction. So. Okay, I'll, I'll turn it to Count, uh, Councillor Burback. I was wondering maybe if Mr. Mosley could uh, give us a little bit of discussion on what his thoughts are about uh, the possibility of providing free transit, say during um, shutdown times or at different uh, colored uh, whatever they're called, lockdown measures or COVID response measures. That would be great. Thank you. Mr. Mosley. Yes, there you are. Uh, could I have you provide comment, please? Yeah, certainly through the chair. Thank you. Um, basically, depending on whether we're color coded or we're, you know, whether that's gray or red or we're, we're locked down, um, I believe the message has always been, at least for transit anyway, that um, uh, essential trips is is always been kind of the message. So no matter what kind of color we were at, um, uh, besides green, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it was always about essential travel um, and, and and try to stay home um, and and to have different levels of of free fares, you know, based on green, yellow, or orange, or, or to keep changing it based on whatever level we're at, could I, I could just see as, as confusing uh, over time if, if that was uh, the recommendation or the consideration of, of council, um, only because it does change week to week. Uh, we've seen in the past that it seemed about every two weeks we, we um, no one really anywhere stayed at a consistent level for a, a great deal of time. So um, it, it just, I would, I would just think it would be tough, tough to manage um, from a department point of view and possibly confusing to, to, uh, to our dedicated riders as far as, you know, uh, what does it cost today to, to, to try to ride and try to get that message out on a consistent basis could be, uh, it could be a little troublesome at times. Thank you. So, Councillor Burback. Yeah, so I, I'll make the motion that we file the report uh, providing the different uh, free transit during various stages. So okay. I'll, I'll move the stack re recommendation that we receive it and then that we file it. So I'm just gonna go back to Councillor Seven Ed, as we had that motion, uh, are you, would you be willing to amend your original motion to that effect, Councillor Seven? Yep, I um, agree to that. Okay, and then Councillor Burback, you second that, so you're you're fine with your your proposal there as well. Is there any further discussion to this? Seeing none. All in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. The rest is for your information, and. I'll call for a motion to adjourn. Motion by Councillor Vasilakos and second by Councillor Gaffney. All in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. So we'll reconvene. Item 15, uh, one is declarations of pecuniary interest made at standing committees. Uh, and if any were made, please restate them. This time I don't see any. Item 15, two is reading of the bylaws. And uh, there is one bylaw, 11.8 confirmatory bylaw, which requires first and second reading and third and final. 
Great. Moved by Councillor Burback, seconded by Councillor Henderson. The confirmatory bylaw be read a first and second time. All those in favor? Opposed to any? That's carried. Third and final reading, Councillor Gaffney and Councillor Bunting. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed to any? And that's carried. Thank you. A motion to adjourn this afternoon's proceedings. Moved by Councillor Vasilakos and seconded by Councillor Beatty. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? And that's carried. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Stay safe, everyone.